inside of our movies component, we're going to render a movie list component. So right inside of here, let's render a movie list component. Of course, this is a new component that we haven't created yet. So now might be a good time to do so. Inside of the components, let's create a new folder as we always do called movie list. It's also going to contain a movie list dot JSX. So let's do movie list dot JSX. And again, it's going to be a simple react arrow function component, where for now, we're simply going to display a movie list. Sometimes I don't like that ESLint automatically does this. So right now, I'm simply going to add a console log and simply say movie list right here. That way, it's not going to compress it into an instant return. So now we can go into our movies component. And there's this little trick. If you double click the component name and press control space, you can click here, and it's automatically going to import it for you. That's a really, really handy trick. But before we do that, we forgot to actually export it the way we're exporting all of the other components inside of the index.js. So let's go ahead and add our movie list. Now let's go back to our movies. And let's try that trick right now. Command space, click, there we go. Now it imported it just from the components folder. Great. Now we have our movie list, but we aren't displaying anything there. So let's go ahead and create a prop called movies. And we're going to pass just the data. Remember, that's the data that contains all the information about different movies. So we don't have to console log it anymore, at least not here, we're passing it into our movie list, where we'll have to do the rest of the coding. So inside of here, we are getting movies as our prop. And now we can make use of them. But first, let's import a few things from material UI, we're going to import a grid component from add MUI, and then material. We also need to create our own styles. So I'm going to say import use styles from dot slash styles. So don't forget to create a new styles file right here inside of the movie list. And again, we're going to do a similar thing. Copy this and just have it like that. That way, if we need to add some styles, we can easily do it here. And don't forget, to get the styles, we can say const classes is equal to use styles. Great. So now how are we going to make use of this grid to show different movies? What we can do is instead of this div, render a grid here, more specifically a grid that's going to be of a type container. And that's going to have a class name equal to classes dot movies container. Now let's add that class, our movies container class is going to have a display equal to flex. It's also going to have a flex wrap set to wrap so that we can wrap our movies into multiple lines. It's also going to have justify content equal to space between. And finally, it's going to have the overflow set to auto. Also on mobile devices. So we have to do theme dot breakpoints dot down, and then put the small there. So on mobile devices, we want to say justify content is equal to center because we want to show our movies at the center of the screen. As you can see, this theme is undefined. So we can just use it here. Great. Now we have our movie list styles, and we can go ahead and continue implementing our movie list. So to implement it, I'm going to use a dynamic block of code here and say movies dot results. And then we can use the dot map function, where we're going to instantly return something. And that something is going to be a movie. We're also going to use the index here. And what we can do is simply create a new component called a movie. To that movie, we're going to pass a key, which is going to be equal to the index, and also the movie itself, which is going to be equal to movie. We're also going to pass the index prop, which is going to be i is equal to i. Now, finally, we have to create this movie component. 
And now it might be a bit weird. We have movies, movie list, and then the movie itself. Later on, we're gonna have the movie information. And this is how you write good React applications. Because if you have everything in one component, and as that component grows, you're gonna end up with a file that contains more than a thousand lines. And who can read that? Not even you after a month, and the teammates won't be able to read it at all. So let's save ourselves the trouble and let's separate everything into a reactive application spread into multiple components. So let's go ahead and create a new folder called movie. And it's going to contain one file as you know it called movie.jsx. It's going to be an RAFCE. And inside of there for now, we can simply say movie. And also we can console log something but for now, we're going to console log what we are passing in. If you remember correctly, we're passing in the movie and we're passing in the index. So let's console log these two things. Now, inside of our movie, let's import a few things. We're going to import a typography. That's a component that we're gonna use for rendering any kind of text. If you have a heading, paragraph, in Material UI, you use a typography. We're gonna also have a grid a grow element, which is an animation, then we're going to have a tooltip. And finally, the rating component. These things are coming from add MUI material. We are also going to have a link component. So import link, and that's going to be coming from react dash router dash DOM. Finally, we are going to have use styles. So we can say import use styles. And that's coming from dot slash styles. Of course, we haven't created them yet. So let's create a new file called styles inside of our movie. And again, we're simply going to copy what we had here and delete all of the styles. That process is the simplest for me. So I think it's going to suit you as well. Great. Finally, we have to make use of those styles by saying const classes is equal to use styles, and then we call it as a function. Now we are ready to create the JSX. So let's start by first wrapping everything inside of a grid. That grid is going to be of a type item. Remember, before in the movie list, we had a container where we are mapping over different movies. Now in this individual movie, we just have the grid item. That's one of our items. Now we're going to have a few properties for mobile responsiveness. XS means extra small devices. And we want this movie to take 12 spaces out of 12 on mobile devices. Because they are not that wide, we can only fit one. So 12 out of 12 spaces for each item. On small devices, we can fix two. So we can say each one can take six out of 12. On medium devices, we can fit three. So we can say four for each one. And then on large devices, we can fit four, that's four times three. And then finally, on extra large devices, we can fit six in one row. We're also going to give it a class name equal to classes dot movie. Just so we don't forget, we can immediately add that movie right here. And it's going to be simply movie padding is 10 pixels. You might have thought it's going to be something more complicated. But now we're just adding the padding material UI is doing most of the work for us. Now if we add a typography here, let's add a new typography. And that's going to be a typography of class name equal to classes dot title. It's also going to be a variant set to h5. And then inside of there, we can simply render movie.title. So this is the only thing we're going to render now. Let's just go ahead and add this class name of title. Our title is going to have a color set to theme.palette.text.primary. We're going to have the text overflow set to ellipsis. If you don't know what ellipsis does is it basically cuts down the text if it overflows over a certain area. So if you have a really, really long title, a really, really long title, and let's say that it cannot fit, it can only fit up to this point, then 
ellipsis is simply going to cut it and add dots. It's going to make it look like this. That's basically all that it does. With that, we also have to provide the width, which is going to be 230 pixels. I found that number to work the best. We're going to have the white space set to no wrap, as well as the ore flow hidden. Then we're going to give it margin top set to 10 pixels and also margin bottom set to zero. Finally, we're going to say text align is equal to center. Great. Now let's go ahead and save this and check this out in action. Are we actually going to see all of these movies? Well, I just remembered not yet. We are not actually importing this movie right there, so we're just gonna get an error. So before we go ahead and save it, remember that trick, control space. And if you're lucky enough, there we go. We get our movie, but don't forget, we first have to export it from here. So just put a movie right there, go back to the movie list, control space, and then simply import the movie from dot dot. Make sure to put it in curly braces. And I think that now we are ready. I closed all the files. I'm going to open just the movie one. And we are expecting to see 20 different movies, just the titles. That's the only thing we're showing right now. So let's go ahead and save it and take a look. Unfortunately, instead of the movies, we're seeing this crazy type error. Cannot read property of undefined. This is definitely the most common error that you're going to get. And the reason for that error is quite simple. So we're trying to access an object property that is undefined. Either the movies or the results is undefined. In this case, the movies is undefined. We can read that because it's saying reading results from undefined and therefore movies have to be undefined. So how are they undefined if we're fetching them correctly? Well, fetching is not happening instantly. So we actually have to provide some kind of loading for the movies to load and only then can we display them. So let's go back to our movies component. And right here, we're going to implement that loading. But our life is so easy because Redux Toolkit query gives us the loading state right out of the box. Alongside data, we're getting a few special properties. We're getting the error property, which is going to let us know if there's an error and also the is fetching property, which is a state that's going to indicate whether we're currently fetching data or not. Now we can make use of these states to show different loading screens or render the movies when they are ready. So let's first fix our is fetching property by saying if is fetching. So if we are fetching movies, in that case, return and we want to return a box, that box is going to have a display equal to flex and also justify content is equal to center. A box is nothing more than a div, but Material UI allows you to simply add some of the styles straight away. And then inside of there, we want to have a circular progress. A circular progress is like a loading spinner and we can give it a size equal to something like four rem to make it a bit bigger. Great. Now that we're doing the loading states and the error states, it might be a good idea to cover all the end cases. So let's go ahead and add one more if and say if no data.results.length. So if movies don't exist, in that case, we're going to return a box. So let's say return box and we're going to give it a display is equal to flex and also align items is equal to center. And we can also say MT as in margin top is going to be 20 pixels. Now inside of that box, let's show a typography, which is just a text element with a variant equal to H4. And we can simply say no movies that match dot name. We can add a dot there. We can space this out in multiple lines. And we're going to simply add a break tag and say, please search for something else. 
Later on, we're going to have the search here as well. So this is going to happen only if a person searches for a movie and that movie cannot be found. Finally, we also have to handle this error. So let's say finally, if error, in that case, we want to return an error has occurred. This shouldn't really happen, but if it does, we're handling it. So now we have these three if statements. This one is for loading. This one is if there's no data and this one is for an obscure error. And the fourth one is actually rendering out the movie list, which is then rendering each individual movie. So now if we save that, let's go ahead and check it out. And would you look at that? Our movies are right here. We can see them. I can even do this and see how they span out nicely on bigger devices. Four per row, three per row, two per row, and then finally mobile view. Great. This is looking really, really good. We can right now see just the titles. At the time of the recording, Venom is really popular, Free Guy, Venom again, and some of the similar movies. At the time when you're watching this video, these movies are most likely going to be different, which is amazing because it means that once you build this application, it's going to show new data as the time passes. Great. Now let's take a short break and then we're going to show more info for each individual movie. We can show things like genres, but most importantly, we're going to show the poster path, which is basically the image.